You know, when Yellowstone pops into your head, probably it's geysers, right? Well, faithful, maybe some bison wandering around. Sure, the classic images. But there's always that other thing kind of simmering beneath the surface, isn't there? The whole super volcano idea. Mm -hmm. It definitely gets people thinking <laughs> and maybe a little worried. Exactly. Like, is that ground about to, you know, do something dramatic? Well, today on The Deep Dive, we're actually tackling that exact question. Yeah, and we've got some really fresh research to dig into. A study just out in Nature, actually. Oh, brand new. Excellent. Yep. Published April 16th, 2025. It's a collaboration between folks at Rice University, University of New Mexico, Utah, UT Dallas. Quite a team. Okay, so what's the big news? Well, here's the interesting part, and maybe the surprising part. They found something under Yellowstone that seems to... Uh, actually reduce the risk of a massive eruption. Reduce the risk? Okay, hang on. That sounds counterintuitive, maybe. My brain immediately goes the other way. I get that. But that's the headline finding. They use some really advanced imaging techniques. Okay, so let's dive in. What did they actually find that makes things look, well, less explosive? So using these techniques, think of it like a really detailed ultrasound. But, you know, for the Earth, they pinpointed this specific layer of magma. Magma, right, the hot stuff. Exactly. But this layer is uh, surprisingly shallow. We're talking only about 3.8 kilometers down, and it's also rich in what scientists call volatiles, things like water and gases. Okay, shallow magma full of gas. I'm still stuck on why that's good news. That sounds like it could be more dangerous, not less. Right. That's the puzzle they were trying to solve. See, for ages, we didn't know exactly how deep the top of the magma system really was. The estimates were all over the place, maybe three kilometers, maybe eight. A pretty big range of uncertainty. Huge. So this study gives us much better clarity on the depth. But the key thing isn't just that it's there. It's what this shallow layer seems to be doing. Okay. The researchers think it acts almost like a, like a lid or maybe a cap sitting on top of the much bigger magma chamber deeper down. A lid. At 3.8 kilometers, okay, I can picture that. But how on earth do you even see something like that? You can't just drill down there. No, definitely not. They use something called controlled source seismology. Controlled source. Okay, what does that involve? Well, imagine a really massive truck, like 53,000 pounds massive. It's called a vibrosized truck. Whoa, like they use for finding oil and stuff. Exactly like that. <laughs> this truck has a special plate underneath that vibrates the ground in a very controlled way. Tiny, tiny little shakes. So it's giving the Earth a little wiggle to see what's inside. That's actually a pretty good way to think about it. These vibrations send seismic waves, sound waves, basically down into the ground. Uh -huh. And these waves bounce off different materials and layers underground. Then they have a whole network of sensors, over 600 seismometers in this case, spread out to listen for those returning waves, those echoes. Listening for echoes deep underground. Got it. And by analyzing how long it takes the waves to come back and how strong they are, you can build up a picture, like a map, of what's down there. Okay, mapping the underground with sound waves. Precisely. And the lead author, Cheng Long Duan at Rice, developed a really sophisticated way to process these signals, wave equation imaging, they call it. It gave them a remarkably clear image. Super clear. Apparently so. Another researcher, Brandon Schmant, mentioned being really surprised at seeing such a strong reflection, such a clear echo coming back from that specific depth. It told him something physically distinct was definitely there. Okay, so they get this amazing picture of this layer, this magma cap at 3.8 kilometers. What's it actually like? It's not just liquid rock, right? No, not quite. Their model suggests it's more like a, um, a mush, a mixture of partially molten rock, so some liquid rock, the silicate melt, mixed into a porous rock structure. Porous, like a sponge. Sort of, yeah. yeah. And crucially, within those pores, you have bubbles of gas and fluids. Specifically, they think it's supercritical water. Supercritical water, that sounds intense. What is that? Think of water that's under such incredible heat and pressure that it's not really a liquid, not really a gas, but something in between with properties of both. Wow. Okay, and they estimate this cap layer is maybe around 14% porous overall, and about half of that pore space is filled with these fluid bubbles. That's the volatile rich part. Right. So mushy rock, partly melted, full of super hot pressurized water bubbles quite close to the surface. Now, connect the dots for me again. How does that reduce the risk? My gut is still screaming danger. Okay, yeah, let's bridge that gap. It comes down to how gases behave in magma. 
Normally, as magma rises towards the surface, the pressure drops. Right, less rock piled on top. Exactly. And as pressure drops, dissolved gases, like water vapor, start to come out of the liquid rock and form bubbles. It's called exolution, like opening a soda bottle. It's fizz. Okay. Now, if those bubbles get trapped, the pressure builds and builds. It can make the magma more buoyant, push it upwards faster, and potentially lead to a really big explosive eruption. That's the classic scenario. Trapped gas equals big boom potential. Got it. So Yellowstone is different how? This is the cool part. The evidence here suggests that this shallow, porous, volatile, rich layer isn't trapping the gas. It's actually letting it out. Letting it out? How? It seems the gases are able to seep upwards relatively easily through this mushy, porous layer, through all those interconnected pore spaces and maybe tiny cracks and channels. Ah, so instead of the pressure building up like in a sealed container. It's more like it has a leaky lid. The system can vent. Brandon Schmidt used a great analogy. He called it steady breathing. Steady breathing. I like that. Yeah, the idea is that bubbles rise from the deeper magma, percolate through the shallower cap layer, and release their pressure more gradually and continuously. So it acts like a natural safety valve, releasing the pressure bit by bit. That's the interpretation. Yeah. It prevents that critical pressure buildup that could trigger a really massive explosion. And that makes perfect sense when you think about Yellowstone, doesn't it? It's not exactly dormant up there. Not at all. All the geysers, the hot springs, the bubbling mud pots. That's the gas escaping, right? That's the breathing. Absolutely. Those famous hydrothermal features are basically the surface evidence of this exact process, the ongoing venting of heat and gas from the magma system below. Okay, this is genuinely fascinating. It really flips the script on how I pictured Yellowstone's plumbing, but... Wow, doing this research must have been tough. Oh, for sure. They faced some real challenges. First off, they were doing the main field survey, driving that huge truck around during the COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, wow. That must have complicated things. Hugely. Plus, you're in a busy national park. They could only operate the Vibrosace truck at night and only along certain roadsides to minimize disruption to, you know, tourists and wildlife. Night shifts in Yellowstone with a giant migrating truck during a pandemic. Sounds memorable. I bet. And then just deploying and retrieving over 600 of those sensitive seismometers across that landscape, that's a massive logistical task in itself. And was the data clean? Easy to read? Quite the opposite, apparently. Yellowstone's geology is incredibly complex underground. All sorts of different rock types, existing fractures. It misses with the seismic waves. Ah, so the echoes get jumbled. Exactly. They describe the raw data as very noisy. Chenglong Duan apparently spent a ton of time figuring out how to filter out all that noise. What did he do? He actually adapted a clever signal processing trick, something called the Stalta function, and built it into his wave imaging algorithm. It helped isolate the faint reflections from the magma cap from all the background clutter. So real perseverance needed, not just fancy tech. Definitely. It highlights that combination of cutting edge tools and just sheer dedicated effort to make sense of complex data. It's pretty incredible what they can figure out miles beneath our feet. So, beyond just reassuring us about Yellowstone, maybe, what are the bigger takeaways here? Well, for Yellowstone itself, this gives scientists a much clearer picture of the current state of the system. It provides a new baseline for monitoring. So they can watch this cap layer for changes. Exactly. They can look for subtle shifts in, say, how much melt is present, or if gases start accumulating differently. That could potentially give warnings if the system starts to change in the future. Makes sense. And more broadly, it just showcases how powerful these advanced seismic imaging techniques are becoming. They're not just for volcanoes. Right. You mentioned oil and gas earlier. What else? Well, think about safely storing carbon dioxide underground. You need to know the structure precisely. Or finding geothermal energy sources. Or understanding earthquake hazards in other complex areas. Being able to get clearer pictures of the subsurface is... Uh, really crucial for a lot of things. So this kind of research pushes those technologies forward for all sorts of applications. Totally. Schmidt basically said that imaging the subsurface is key for many societal needs, and it often takes creativity and hard work to actually reveal those hidden structures. Okay, so let's wrap this up. For everyone listening, what's the main thing to take away from this deep dive into Yellowstone's underground secrets? I think the key takeaway is this discovery of the shallow magma cap, this sort of mushy, volatile, rich layer. Mm. And crucially, that it seems to be acting like a leaky lid, letting gases vent steadily. The steady breathing. Exactly. Which suggests that right now, the system is relatively stable, 
and the risk of a you know caldera forming super eruption is lower because that pressure isn't building up catastrophically. It's just a fantastic example of how science can uncover these hidden mechanisms, even in places we think we know so well. Cutting edge stuff giving us real insights. It really is. And it makes you think, doesn't it? If Yellowstone has these kinds of complex um, safety features built in that we're only just discovering, what other parts of the natural world or even other areas of science might have similar hidden depths or unexpected behaviors waiting to be found if we just, you know, look closer? That's a great question to ponder. There's always more beneath the surface. Absolutely. Well, thanks for taking this deep dive with us today. My pleasure. And hey, if you enjoyed this journey beneath Yellowstone, please do follow or subscribe to The Deep Dive wherever you listen. Give us a like, maybe tell a friend. It helps others find the show. And definitely let us know if there are other topics you're curious about. We're always looking for ideas for future dives. We are indeed. We might even find some interesting resources or links related to the topics if you want to explore further yourself. But until next time, keep asking questions.